Good Thursday evening, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, or at least I should be now at House Onyx right now, again, looking at some fairly quiet conditions into the Mid-South, but that may not be staying that way as we go into the rest of tomorrow and into Saturday. Going to be seeing the possibility of some fairly heavy amounts of rainfall coming our direction and also, again, the possibility of seeing, again, some maybe severe weather for much of the area. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little while. Currently in the Mid-South, again, not much is happening, at least just yet. We're monitoring radar very carefully because there is going to be the potential of maybe some more thunderstorms into tonight. Doesn't look like much, but it is still going to be possible. So again, we'll keep our eyes on that for you as we go throughout the rest of the evening. We'll have an update again with Tim Simpson tonight on News Channel 3 live at 10 o'clock, about two hours away. And of course, Todd Demers will have an update on the forecast coming up into tomorrow morning. So we'll have, again, a lot to talk about in the next couple of days going to have to stay tuned to News Channel 3 or, again, weather sources out there to make certain you're, again, staying safe. That's going to be the main thing at this point in time to, again, make certain you, your kids, your family, your business, wherever, is ready to go for this. This is not hyping the weather. This is making certain that you, the viewers, are ready to go for this because right now we could be looking again at some fairly energetic conditions across much of the area as we go into the next couple of days, because we are seeing again that possibility of a moderate threat of severe weather into and around the area tomorrow. That's going to be the main focus, and this could be a pretty significant outbreak. We haven't seen a moderate threat level like this, this close to the Mid-South, in a couple of years' time. So this is going to be something very important for right now to where we keep an eye on what's going to be happening out there. Let's go ahead and get started with tonight. Again, if you got any questions on the forecast, drop them into the comments section, and we'll be glad to tackle as many of them as we possibly can. Again, we cannot give forecast updates for everybody in every place. It's just not possible to do that. Wish we could do that, but we'd end up spending about a couple of hours doing a forecast from everybody from Arlington to Oxford and beyond. So again, we've got to keep up to date on what's going on with what's going on out, you know, keeping an update with what's happening out there throughout the rest of the evening for as broad a picture as we possibly can for right now. The status of the atmosphere is active. We've got again some areas of showers as we showed you on radar, but right now it's mainly just cloud cover and we've got a bunch of clouds out there for the time being. And again, that's that moisture that's going to be picking up as we go throughout the rest of the forecast. The main problem, again, with severe weather is also going to be coupled with the potential of looking at the possibility of some, not just severe weather, but also some flooding rainfall out there. This is what, again, we're going to be watching for this period of time uh, into and around the area coming up through the area close to the south central United States, all the way back up into and around the Great Lakes. Uh, we could be talking anywhere between about two to five inches of rainfall into and around the area of the midsection of the country. Now, specifically, that it's not technically that much of a problem because at this time of the year we tend to get a lot of moisture to begin with. But again, it's winter time, and again, there's been a lot of leaves and debris swept down into the culverts and things like that. So runoff being blocked by that debris and the fact that we've already had a pretty soggy year. If you remember, we finished up the fourth wettest year in Memphis history just last year into 2019. So we may see again some good amounts of flooding going on in the next couple of days as all that water that you see on the map there drains away down right through the Mississippi Channel and that's where we're going to start to see again more problems out there. Now for right now the large green area that you see is again the National Weather Service issuing a uh, flash flood watch in effect. That's again for the areas that you see from parts of Texas and Oklahoma all the way back up into and around the Great Lakes and back into and around across much of the mid Mississippi Valley. That's where we're going to be seeing a lot of problems with backed up rivers, streams, lakes, things like that. Now here directly in the Mid-South area, much of what we're looking at for right now 
is focused just north of the News Channel 3 viewing area into and around the Boot Hill of Missouri and into and around eastern sections of northeastern Arkansas, north central Arkansas, and back up into southern parts of Missouri. Now again, this means that flash flooding is possible. So if you have any plans for travel in the next couple of days, you're going to want to make certain that you, if you're going through any low-lying areas, rivers, creeks, streams, things like that, please keep an eye on the possibility of seeing again some slow travel, maybe even some blocked off travel. You wouldn't drive into a wildfire. Why would you drive into a flood? That's just a pretty simple question to ask on there. So keep that in mind. And if that flash flood watch gets expanded, of course, we'll let you know about that uh, on News Channel 3. Katie Bell, been very windy today. Very true. Going to be even windier coming up into tomorrow as well. Uh, let's see, David Just Fish, is severe weather in the wintertime common. It can happen. This is where we can see some of the worst weather at this time of the year uh, when it comes to severe weather. We're just about to move into severe season number one, and that's going to be, again, the worst of the worst from January, roughly about this time frame, all the way through about April or so. And that's where we could see, again, uh, severe weather, including large hail, damaging winds, and, of course, tornadoes. So that could be a bit of a possibility out there for the next couple of days for right now. But nothing happening into and around the area immediately for tonight. So good news on that. Linda Woody, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, April hence, 60 degrees in Eureka Springs, Mississippi, and partly cloudy. Thanks for the weather report there. And thanks to everybody else for joining us in and around the Mid-South. Now, all that water coming down the Mississippi Valley is going to be causing, again, some concerns, especially on the Mississippi River. Now, from Dr. Gene Wrench, the National Weather Service hydrologist, retired hydrologist, but very glad he's still on the job, we're going to be seeing a bit of a bump here at about 28 feet. That's not too bad, and then we're going to be dropping downwards over the course of the next couple of days as we head toward about roughly about this time next week, about Thursday the 16th. Then all that water starts to arrive at the Mid-South area and then starts going way upwards to where we are at flood stage, which at Memphis is 34 feet, and then eventually starts to dwindle, but it's going to take a long time for all that water to reach the Gulf of Mexico. So we've got a long period starting off again in the next several days where the river level is just going to go upwards very quickly, and go downwards very slowly. So this could lead to some backups on things like the Lusahatchee, the Wolf, the Nankana, places like that all around the Mid-South could be seeing a lot of problems with that. So definitely, again, keep it tuned to News Channel 3, and we'll keep you advised on what we might be looking there. And thank you to Dr. Wrench for keeping a very close eye on that. If you'd like to follow him, uh, he's available on Twitter at MajorFlood42, and he keeps a very close eye on a lot of this stuff. Detailed forecast maps when it comes to precipitation, river levels, all that kind of stuff. Again, that's MajorFlood42 on Twitter. And you can also tell a little bit more about what it's going to be looking like when it comes to the water flooding here in Memphis to where a lot of the underground or underwater areas uh, back toward West Memphis, Arkansas goes right up, right into and around that area of the uh, the levee system right to the east of West Memphis, Arkansas, and parts of Mud Island might be underwater coming up within the next several days. So that, again, could be something to uh, watch out for for travel. It's a good possibility that all those trails around West Memphis from across the river in Memphis, Tennessee are going to be closed down in the next couple of days because of the fact that we've got all that water going on. All right, taking a look at severe weather, moving again into what we're seeing again for right now. The blue area that you take a look at here uh, is the National Weather Service. What this map uh, represents is thunderstorm possibility. The greatest thunderstorm possibility that you see is in the blue shaded area. And that, again, is where we are going to see better possibilities of thunderstorms from, say, Fort Smith, Arkansas, through about west central areas of Illinois, south of Chicago. The brown shaded area indicates, again, a lesser potential, but still a possibility. And that comes right about down to Interstate 40 or so. So it is possible that we might see a thunderstorm popping up tonight. It doesn't look like much 
but it is still going to be possible out there. So again, that's something to watch out for uh, into the overnight hours. Rick Cheddar from Radio Memphis and former news anchor extraordinaire from KTK in Topeka, welcome to the show. Uh, Amy Harrison from Jackson, Tennessee, welcome. Nesbitt, Mississippi, Tanya Hitchens and... Steve Foster, 59 degrees in Corinth, Mississippi, and a circle around the moon. That's a good harbinger of uh, rainfall on the way from what it looks like there. Now, looking, whoops, that should not be there. Hang on one moment. Uh, going back to the forecast, there we go, for uh, the area down to our south, Dallas, Shreveport, south of Texarkana, that's where we're going to be looking at the potential again for the possibility of the heaviest weather, and that's going to be for tomorrow. Now, this forecast is several hours old, so we could see a big improvement to where it's not quite as bad, or we could see a lot more activity. Again, it has rarely been this active with a moderate threat level that you see in the red polygon there down toward the Arklatex and just into and south of the Red River Valley. Now here in the Mid-South area, uh, for right now, for Friday, that is where we're going to be seeing again the potential for the dark green polygon is the marginal threat, that's a lesser possibility, going up to a yellow, that's a slight risk. So as you go toward the red, that increases the threat of severe weather up there. But for the Mid-South, for right now, for Friday, especially Friday afternoon and evening, we start to see again more marginal, sporadic, not quite as severe as down to the south and west of us in that red-shaded polygon, but we still need to be on the lookout for what may be coming our directions up that direction, coming our direction from that particular area as this storm system lifts its way on through. Now this is Friday, and again, looking at a moderate threat this far out definitely needs our attention for Saturday going into and around the area well, my browser is messing up so badly apologies on that uh, we look again for the enhanced threat as we get into stop that I'm talking to my browser that's a sure sign of not good looking at the area here the best potential of severe weather from between Houston and New Orleans and back up to just around the area of see if I can get that Birmingham and down once again to about the Florida Panhandle. That orange shaded area, light orange shaded area is an enhanced risk. That's the greatest threat on Saturday. So moving from the Oklahoma area into and around the deep south, the Gulf Coast, south of the Mid-South. But notice once again that we have that potential right here in the area right on in through Saturday. So when are we talking about for this potential? We'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit. Either way, again, this is not anything in the way of hype or trying to th make certain you tune in just so you get scared and that gets more people to watch us. We do not do that. We never have, and anybody on any other TV station who says so is a liar. So that, again, is the main thing to look at. We are here doing our best to let you know what's going on so you can be safe period, end of sentence. We do not hype anything and never have. So again, that's one thing to make certain that you uh, keep an eye on and treat this seriously. It's not anything to panic over, but it is something to make certain that you are prepared for. And that's again, exactly what needs to happen as we go into the forecast for tomorrow. Ashley Norris, a tornado watch for tomorrow. It's possible, but for right now, it's going to be late for us if it happens. And if, again, the forecast for tomorrow is a little bit different from what we're seeing again for right now. This is what it looks like again for tomorrow with that orange to red greatest threat down around Dallas between there and Jackson, Mississippi. Now, if that gets a little bit north and the storm system tracks a little farther north of where it's supposed to go, that could easily wind up in the area. And yes, we could have a lot more in the way of tornadic weather coming our direction. So again, that could be something for us to kind of watch out for as this situation changes, which they do. So once again, that's going to be something else to, again, just monitor as much as possible on here. Again, this is a situation to where you don't want to be stuck someplace out and about not paying attention to what goes on or have the attitude of it won't happen to me. That's one of the most fatal attitudes you can possibly have. So now is the time to make certain that you are prepared 
and get ready to what is going on here. All right, let's take a look at what's going on where it comes to, again, the current models out there. Uh, if you notice in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, you'll notice the letters H triple R. That is the high resolution rapid refresh model. And that gives us an idea as to the short range forecast. That's about roughly 18 to 24 hours ahead. It's geared for short range forecasting. So it gives us a very good idea as to what is going to be going on. Mid-South area, again, right about through here. The map you're looking at for right now uh, is set for the area into and around uh, Friday uh, early. I'm going to run this back a little bit here so we get to where we want to go to. What we're going to be looking for, again, as we go into and around the area, again, keeping your eyes on that particular forecast uh, for, again, that particular area, that is where we see uh, through about the area into tomorrow morning, running it ahead to about noon tomorrow. And that's where we start to see, again, the potential for the possibility of those thunderstorms developing ahead of the main line. And that's going to be the main thing we're going to have to watch out for is this particular system here uh, spinning up stuff ahead of that line. Now, if something does develop out there, that's where the strongest storms could wind up being. So right about noon tomorrow, according to this, we could be looking at the potential for maybe some storms developing uh, into and around the Memphis metro area, the I-40 corridor. And that, again, could be a bit of a situation for us to really be keeping our eyes on there. Going ahead a little farther as that cluster continues to develop and move away from us into the north and west of us, that's when we start to see toward about the area of very early on Saturday morning, uh, the potential of that squall line developing and getting, again, very close to us. And again, anything that forms in advance of that line, that's where we see the potential of, again, the strongest area of weather coming on through. Now, once this passes on through, through about uh, Saturday late morning, afternoon, that's it for the chances of rainfall as we get into the forecast there toward about the afternoon and evening on Saturday. Until then, we've got, again, the potential for watching again for anything happening into and around the area for right now. Uh, Zach Davis, yes, I understood that uh, Mr. Timmer is going to be in the area. Uh, hopefully he stays safe out there. And speaking of uh, storm chasing out there, you do not chase storms, period, end of sentence, unless you have been highly trained by experts like Mr. Timmer or other people in the community. You do not chase storms, just jump in the car and do stuff like that. That could be the last mistake that you ever make. So again, please, please, please use some common sense out there and again do not do anything that's going to be causing you uh, problems or getting in the way of emergency vehicles all of which i've seen untrained spotters do uh, when i was back in fort smith arkansas around the area of uh, western arkansas close to that area april 21st 1996 the sebastian county sheriff had to ask us at channel 5 kfsm to ask everybody to stay off the road Quit going out and collecting tornado debris souvenirs because you are blocking the emergency vehicles. Please, again, do not do that. Make certain that you've got a safe place to go to and to stay and to stay off the roadways until any rescue or emergency operations have been concluded. If there is tornado damage or wind damage, and I hope sincerely that there is not, I never hope for stuff like that, but if it does happen, There'll be stuff lying around for months to come afterwards. You don't need to get out immediately after it happened to prove that you were out there on social media or anything like that. It's not smart. It's not safe. Please just don't do it. Okay, off the soapbox for right now. Again, what we're going to be seeing for the course of the next day or two, we're just not picking up much of anything for tonight. But Friday night into Saturday morning, very early. And again, this map you're looking at right here is for... Again, it's about 4 to 5 o'clock in the morning to where we see that line starting to make its way through, heading across the Mid-South Mississippi River area overnight between about roughly 3 and 6 in the morning and then passing on through throughout the rest of the area after that. We'll go for a little bit longer display here. Go to the... Uh, North American model and give you an idea as to what we see on this because again the storm forms uh, right around the Memphis metro area about tomorrow afternoon 
and then continues again to just show some sporadic showers and thunderstorms through tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening, mainly in north central areas of Arkansas. And then again about midnight through about six o'clock in the morning, which is where this map is centered for, we see again that potential for the storm making its way through the Arkansas area and back into around the Mississippi River Valley. And that crosses the area going again back to the east of the Mississippi and then everything clears on out so that by about dinner time on Saturday, everything is pretty much done. So that's going to be about it for the possibility of anything involving severe weather out there afterwards and getting done with everything else. So hopefully, again, we stay to that schedule. If the storm speeds up a little bit, again, please keep it tuned to News Channel 3, and we'll keep you advised on what we might be looking for as that system comes on through. Again, 6 o'clock Sunday morning, or Saturday morning, crossing the Mississippi River, going into the rest of the Mid-South there. We also are seeing, again, the worst available energy taking place just south of the Mid-South. So if I were in anything south of I-40, that again is where we're going to be seeing the most energetic weather taking place as we see the possibility of the strongest storms. Jackson, Mississippi, Pine Bluff, Arkansas, uh, New Orleans, uh, just to the south of Oxford and Batesville. That's where I think the worst of the worst is going to be Friday night into Saturday morning. So that's where we'll see, again, the potential for the heaviest weather going on there. Please don't forget, again, we've got the forecast update going on. Tim Simpson will have an update on the forecast available tonight on News Channel 3 at 10 to where we have some cooler weather coming on through. And it looks like if everything is working properly here, toward about next Thursday, we might be seeing a big downturn in the temperatures as we go toward about uh, Thursday next week on the 16th. So if that happens, we'll be seeing again some pretty chilly conditions out there if that holds. And don't forget to follow us on social media, including on Twitter, to where we can keep you updated as to what's going on uh, in the Mid-South. The weather experts are going to be on top of this over the next couple of days. So definitely, again, want to make certain you know exactly what's going on out there. Uh, just want to be making certain that you are updated as much as possible on this approaching storm system because this is serious. There's nothing to be messing around with because, again, this is something that you want to stay as informed as possible. Good opportunity, again, to get ready right now. Get fresh batteries in your weather radio. Have your cell phone charged and ready to go. Does your family, does your school have a severe weather plan, especially for, say, after school, late night, anything like that going on? Does everybody know, have an out-of-town contact in case there is a problem with communications? Anything like that is possible. It may not be likely, but it's something that, again, people need to definitely keep an eye on uh, and, again, be prepared for. You need to be prepared for what the weather can do, not what you prefer it to do. And that, again, could lead to some fatal attitudes out there. So uh, take a look for right now. Beverly Thomas, the worst uh, for us is going to be Friday night into Saturday morning. What you're looking at, again, right here with the threat of the moderate area, the orange po or the red polygon there right in the middle, that is showing, again, the worst threat for tomorrow. This map is set for tomorrow night and into around Saturday morning. Saturday uh, early Saturday morning, that's again where we see the potential of the storm system catching up with us and going just a little bit farther down to our south, just into and around the area. Now, just because Memphis is in a, a marginal dark green polygon and the rest of the Mid-South has nothing going on, this is not a time to start relaxing on this. We're going to have to pay attention to this all the way through uh, Saturday morning as we see that threat making its way uh, onto around the Mid-South area for right now. Uh, Beverly Thomas for South Haven, yes, you are going to see that possibility of severe weather uh, in tune around the area there. Corey Sarton uh, going to be out in the field mobile spotting for the National Weather Service Memphis. Excellent. Uh, please be safe out there and to make certain that you are uh, safety first and safety always when you're doing anything for spotters out across uh, much of the area. Betty Levingston, Senatobia, Mississippi. Yes, severe weather threat there as well from tomorrow night into around Saturday or so. And that, again, pretty much includes all the Mid-South. Again, everybody watching this, if you're in the Mid-South area, you need to be careful of anything that you see going on, whether you're in Dyersburg, Jonesboro, the Missouri Boot Hill, anything south of that, all the way down into and around the area of uh, northern Mississippi and southeast Arkansas, 
you got to pay attention to this. So even though you think, well, I'm just very close to the edge of that one area right there, I don't really have to worry about it. You really should be concerned and watch what goes on. That's going to be the main thing to keep an eye on this. You cannot just say it's gone, it's over with until everything moves out of the area. And believe you me, we will be keeping an eye uh, on that one for the next several days as this goes on through for right now. Jody McCullough Emmert, again, into and around the area that you're watching for uh, Saturday. Doesn't look like much for right now as you take a look at that area close to around northeast Arkansas. But once again, as that storm system gets close enough to the area tomorrow night and into Saturday morning, Manila, Arkansas shows that possibility of severe weather as well. So again, anywhere in the Mid-South, no matter what area we cover with broadcast, East Arkansas, back into around North Mississippi, West Tennessee, the Memphis metro area, everybody is included in this basically uh, in the Mid-South. Don't know what county you're in? Now's a great time to find out because that's how the National Weather Service issues warnings on a county-by-county -county basis. They issue it again for the counties and the specifics of those cities into an area. That's why you see these graphics uh, on the National Weather Service homepage divided up by counties. So that's how they issue these things. So you might be in Dyer County, Tennessee, and hearing of tornado warnings in Craighead County, Arkansas. That is could be heading your direction. So again, that's something to watch out for. Not just your county, but what other counties are in and around your particular area. That's something, again, to know before the severe weather starts happening. Again, for safety's sake, just to make sure that you have a good idea of location out there, that's going to be one of the best things for you right there for right now. Again, everything else getting ready to go. Also, do not just depend on tornado sirens. If you hear that, yes, something's going on immediately and local. But once again, you cannot depend on those because remember that these nice, mostly airtight houses we live in and work in these days, the buildings are very heavily insulated. They're designed to keep the hot air out during the summer and the cold air in during the summer and vice versa in the wintertime. So you can't hear outside that much. So it pays to make sure that you have warnings on your cell phone, warnings by internet, and if necessary, again, listening to a tornado siren, yes, but then also keeping it tuned to News Channel 3 so we can keep you advised as to what may be going on out there. Again, for right now, that's the way the situation is for tonight. This forecast that you, we've been talking about here for tonight, by tomorrow morning at about, say, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, there's going to be another update from the Storm Prediction Center. And Todd Demers, of course, will have more on his forecast coming up bright and early tomorrow morning starting at 430 and, of course, all of us will be watching this so that we can keep an eye on this all the way on through the rest of the weekend. This could be a very busy couple of days, and now is the time to make certain, again, you're ready to go. If we interrupt one of your favorite programs, we will not apologize for it because we are helping to keep people safe, but we will do our best to check with the network and see if we can re-air that episode at some point in time. We do not make that decision. That is up to, if it's a network show, CBS makes that decision for us. We do not have any input into that except for how long we're going to be going over and how much of the show is interrupted. So if you have a problem with your favorite show getting interrupted, please do not call up our interns and our assignment desk editors and our producers on the desk and scream at them or send nasty emails. It's not going to get your TV show on the air any quicker, and we will do our best to tell you when that episode will air later on. There are more important things than television shows, especially when it comes to severe weather. So again, we'll get that information out there to you as soon as we can. Have patience with us. We're doing our best to make certain that we get as much information out there for you to be safe, and that's the priority number one thing to remember at this point. Signing off for now. Again, we've got a lot more to talk about. We'll have an update tomorrow morning. Hopefully here on Weather Overtime, depending on if my internet holds out. And, of course, we'll have more throughout the rest of the next couple of days. 
Please keep it tuned to News Channel 3 and keep it tuned to WREG.com slash weather where you can get this forecast and a ton of other weather information as well. And of course, we'll keep you updated on everything that we can coming up in the next few days. Be alert, be safe, keep it tuned to News Channel 3. The weather experts will keep you updated and we'll have a lot more coming up on Friday. So stay tuned for a lot more from the weather experts. Live and direct from House Onik on News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. Stay tuned for much more with News Channel 3 as this new severe weather system begins to make its way into the Mid-South. Thanks for joining us tonight.